let's talk about the book of Revelation. At Stillwater's Church, we're in this series on the book of Revelation called The Lamb, The Lion, and The Warrior King. And we're reading this book, we're studying this book together, and we're looking at it through the lens of Jesus Christ, because the foundation of the book of Revelation really is all about Jesus. It's all about him. He wins. And so one of the reasons that God promises to bless people that read the book of Revelation or hear it taught or keep it at the center of their life is that when you see Jesus in this and you build your life around Jesus and around the gospel, then no matter what happens your way, it comes your way, no matter what tribulation comes, no matter what trials may come, uh, you're going to be blessed because Jesus is with you. And so Um, That's what we're doing on Sundays. And then each week I'm doing a supplemental video, which is this, and we are defining differing things about uh, the book of Revelation, things that you may find interesting. Last week we defined what eschatology is, and it is the study of things to come. And so uh, this week we're going to be talking about the differing viewpoints of eschatology. So Surprise, surprise, there are differing viewpoints on the book of Revelation. And so one thing you always need to keep in mind is that there are many wonderful Christians and true Bible-believing Christians that may have a differing viewpoint than you do on particular points of the book of Revelation. The main thing that we need to believe is that Jesus is coming again, okay? Now, there are several several differing viewpoints on uh, the book of Revelation and on eschatology of what it looks like. And let me give you three main differing viewpoints of eschatology. First of all is what is called preterism. Preterism. Now, what that is, it sees the prophecies of the Bible as already having been fulfilled for the most part, not all, but that most of the prophecies in the Bible have already been fulfilled. For example, in the book of Daniel, um, there's the vision of the great image, and there's the stone that comes and crushes it. And remember, it's the the head of the image is gold, and then silver and bronze, and a mixture of of iron and clay. Um, So these are visions of what kingdoms would come and rule in the earth. So that would be a preterist kind of viewpoint in that these things have already been fulfilled. In the book of Revelation, preterism would see that uh, most of the prophecies and the, uh, the descriptions you read in the book of Revelation about judgments and tribulation were fulfilled in the first century uh, with the Roman Empire against the Christian church. And so uh, that's the idea of preterism. Preterism also sees that um, or believes that uh, God's promises to Israel and all that he had uh, included Israel for um, was switched to the church uh, around 70 AD um, and so forth. So that would be what is called preterism. It sees that most of the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation in particular have already been fulfilled in the past. The second um, mode of thinking, uh, the philosophy, if you will, about eschatology and how we view and study and interpret the book of Revelation and the book of Daniel is what we would call the historical uh, viewpoint. In other words, they believe that much of this is in history. Now, that's kind of similar uh, to preterism, but let me just read to you uh, a couple of things that will help you distinguish between the two. Uh, It interprets biblical prophecies as already fulfilled, and it associates symbols with historical persons, nations, or events. It mainly concerns Daniel and Revelation, and it sees these prophecies as being fulfilled in the past, present, and future until the second coming of Jesus Christ. Most of your Protestant reformers were uh, people that espoused this viewpoint. Um, They were, uh, if you will, uh, the historical viewpoint. They believed that much of this uh, had already happened. And so there you have the preterist view 
and the historical view. Now, uh, another main viewpoint is the futurist view. Now, what is that? That uh, means that many parallels can be drawn with historical events, but with most eschatological prophecies, they are chiefly referring to events which have not been fulfilled yet. Okay, so that's the futurist view. And uh, they believe that these events will take place at the end of the age and the end of the world. And most prophecies will be fulfilled, uh, in their viewpoint, during the Great Tribulation and afterwards. And, and normally, these viewpoints will be, um, uh, they would be aligned with premillen premillennialism and dispensationalism. Okay, so that would be the, the futurist view. Uh, the idealist viewpoint is that it believes that most of what's written in the book of Revelation would be allegorical um, and that it was um, written in a way not to be taken literally. It's a non-literal approach. And then finally, uh, one of the major viewpoints is the dispensationalist view. Now, I just mentioned that a moment ago. So what is that? Well, that's the idea that human history and biblical history um, are divided into major dispensations or eras in which God dealt with mankind. And so what the dispensationalist view would believe is that there are uh, times that God dealt differently with humankind uh, in the past than he does now. Let me just give you kind of some thoughts on that. There are several dispensations, according to the dispensationalist view, um, that, that we can study. There's the age of innocence, and that's from Adam all the way to the fall of man. So that's that first age or dispensation. So when God created man and Adam and Eve, um, when he created mankind, that was the first dispensation up until the fall. So he dealt differently with mankind uh, during that dispensation than in other dispensations. The next one is the age of conscience or the dispensation of conscience. That's from the fall to the great flood. You read about that in the book of Genesis. After the fall of man, sin began to dominate on the earth. The curse had been uh, passed on the earth and things got worse and worse. And what did God do? He destroyed the earth and he saved humankind and the animals, the land dwelling animals uh, on the ark. And so that would be another uh, dispensation, the dispensation of conscience. The third dispensation is the dispensation of human government. In other words, that would go from the flood to the Tower of Babel. And if you've read in the book of Genesis, you know that at the Tower of Babel is when God disperses people throughout the earth. He confuses their languages. So each of this, this, these dispensations, according to the dispensational view, um, it's not that God did not judge sin or that he did not save people by faith, but rather there was a, a differing area of human government or type of human government uh, that God dealt with mankind uh, during that time. Then there's the dispensation of promise. And that goes from Abraham to Moses. Once again, you read about this in the book of Genesis uh, when God called Abraham and he called him by faith um, or to, to respond by faith and to follow God all the way up until when Moses came to deliver the nation of Israel. The next dispensation, according to the dispensationalist view, is the dispensation of law. And that's from Moses, when God gave Moses the Old Testament law, up until Jesus Christ. And so um, the, the idea is that uh, God dealt differently with uh, people. The dispensationalists really believe that people were saved, not that they were not saved by faith during that dispensation, but rather that it was a little bit different because these people did not know about Jesus Christ yet. And then the next dispensation is what is called the age of grace or the dispensation of grace. And that's from the cross to the rapture. Uh, dispensationalists believe that we are in the age of grace. And I believe that we are in the age of grace as well. God's grace because of the finished work of Jesus Christ, was given to us, poured out 
on the cross for us. And then in their view, the next dispensation will be the dispensation of the millennial reign of Christ. That's 1,000 years when Jesus comes literally to earth and rules and reigns uh, for 1,000 years. Now, uh, this view believes that the rapture and the second coming are separated by the tribulation period. So in other words, they believe that Jesus comes and that's the rapture, the church is caught up, and then for that seven-year period, the church uh, is removed and the tribulation and the judgment of God is poured out on the earth and on evil government and false religion and the beast and Satan and so forth, and that Jesus comes again at the end of the tribulation and that he sets up uh, his millennial reign where he rules for a thousand years And then Satan is loosed for a short period of time. And then the great final battle happens. Jesus conquers all. And then we enter into eternity with the new heaven and the new earth and the new Jerusalem. So that is the idea of dispensationalism. Now, many people, I want you to understand this, including myself, are not strictly in one of these viewpoints or the other. I think tend to believe that some of these things are true from each of the major viewpoints. I am I believe some of the things that the dispensationalist view believes. I believe some things that the historical view believes. I believe some things that the preterist view believes. And so it's important to note that just because someone may not have your exact idea of thinking, does not mean that they're a heretic, okay? It just means they have a different way of interpreting things. And let me just give you an example. Um, The dispensationalist view is a fairly new phenomenon in Christian thinking. It started probably in the 1830s, and uh, so none of the, uh, or at least not many, if any, of the reformers thought this way, not many, if any, of the church fathers thought this way. And so it's a fairly new way of interpreting the book of Revelation. So what do we know? We know that there are differing viewpoints. What do we know? We know that you need to believe that Jesus is coming again. What do we know? We know that you and I need to have grace. The fact is, um, if you want to get all up in arms and angry and uh, fight other believers that may not agree specifically with your little minutia or little details on your viewpoint, then um, that, that's really a waste of time. So we need to have grace. We need to love one another. We need to study because the more you study, the more you're going to learn. And I believe that, um, that together... Uh, we can influence and impact our culture with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So um, these are the differing viewpoints that uh, uh, that we look at eschatology through. And so I hope you'll join us this Sunday. I'm going to be talking about what happens uh, when life surprises you, when life doesn't turn out like you think it should or you were hoping that it would. How do you deal with that? How do you react to that? We're going to look at one of the churches that Jesus spoke to, and uh, we're going to learn a lot about our own lives. So God bless you. I love you. Thank you for being here with us today. I hope you'll watch all these videos and share them with someone. Invite someone to come to church with you and use these videos as a way to help them learn more about the gospel.